2023 Major League Baseball draft beginning on Sunday and running through Tuesday, Sunday, the first two rounds. And speaking of two, how about those two right there? The first two teammates to go one, two in the Major League Baseball draft, the two LSU teammates, Paul Skeens and Dylan Cruz. You can see Paul Skeens going to the Pittsburgh Pirates, the big righty out of LSU, the national champions of college baseball and his teammate Dylan Cruz going to the Nationals uh, also out of LSU. You can see Max Clark there in the top three. Watt Langford played in Florida. He's going in the top four as well, going to the Rangers, played in that national championship series uh, against LSU. Jenkins, Wilson, Rhett Lauder from Wake Forest, the pitcher uh, with the number one Demon Deacons for most of the year at the ending uh, part of the season there in college baseball, going to the Reds. And then you got the Royals and Rockies and Marlins taking Mitchell Dolander from the University of Tennessee and Noble Meyer, a high school pitcher out of Oregon. Now let's go ahead and bring in Chris Welch, CBS Sports Major League Baseball draft analyst. And Chris, let's start at the very top. You look at Paul Skeens. We're talking about a, a generational pitcher here. 6'6", 235, big right arm there. Throws well into the 100 mile per hour range there. Had a, a game against the University of Tennessee in the College World Series, Chris, where he threw 123 pitches. 46 were at 100 miles per hour or better. We're talking about one of the best pitching prospects ever. How do you uh, think he's going to do in Major League Baseball? And there's a lot of talk, Chris, that he should and will pitch for the Pirates here. Can he go straight from LSU and pitch for the Pirates in their starting rotation or at least the bullpen right now? What are his, what are his prospects for the Pirates here this season? For a guy like Paul Skeens, the possibilities are endless because he is a generational talent. Now let's do something fun here. What are the negatives on Paul Skeens? I can only give you two real things. One, the amount of innings he pitched this year. That could be something that plays against just a tiny bit or a team wanting to push him to the majors early on. What's the other? It's a very analytical thing. People talk about the shape of his fastball because the horizontal and vertical movement isn't that much of a separator. But guess what? Everything else is positive because we're talking an 80-grade fastball. 70 grade slider that fastball touches 102 with command so what do we care necessarily about the horizontal and vertical when it's 102 wherever he wants it driveline has a stuff plus rating of 132 on the fastball what that means 32 percent better than other fastballs 100 is the median line with the slider 2600 rpm 122 stuff plus on there those are two highly advanced pitches so could he get to the majors Absolutely. Will the Pirates do it? Well, let's see what they do with eight and a half games out of the actual race and the division. I don't think it's probably going to happen, but if there was a guy to do it, it is Paul Skeens. Yeah, and had over 200 strikeouts for LSU this year as they won the national championship. Was throwing uh, well over 100 late into the seventh inning uh, in the College World Series. So we're talking about a guy with an A++ uh, arm there uh, for Paul Skeens. His teammate goes number two to the Washington Nationals. Uh, you look at it, the Golden Spikes Award winner. So one of the best hitters in college baseball that we've seen uh, as far as a college bat. 426, 18 home runs, 70 RBIs. Dylan Cruz is a bad dude. Barrels up a lot of balls and run, plays a great center field. What sort of a prospect is he, and what does he bring to this Washington Nationals organization, Chris? He is a bad man. You said it right. You know what's the interesting thing, too, is Skeens and him, kind of different personality. Skeens is the type of guy I almost could feel that would tell you what pitch is coming, like Zach Greinke did in the majors. Be like, I'm throwing a fastball. You try to hit it. Cruz, quite assassin, but demolishes baseballs. 95.7 average exit velocity, which is an astronomical number uh, he had in college. 112.8 max EV, which shows raw power. He had 18 homers this past year, hitting over 400. He had a 4-5, almost 7 slash, and he walked over 6% more than he struck out last year. He was on base all 71 games at LSU. Mm. It's absurd, these two. Those stats, 209 strikeouts for Paul Skeens, on base every single LSU game this year for Dylan Cruz. They are men among boys. That's what these guys are. This is another guy I think that could be out of the majors immediately with the way he's patient, he barrels the ball, hit the ball 107 in the College World Series, hit a 107 opposite field single. That's raw power. That is plus raw power. This guy is built for it. He was my number one coming in. Uh, Paul Skeens, one, two. These guys both, what's so great about this draft so far is you're getting the two best players, no money issues, no people trying to, you know, cut deals or anything like that. The two best players went maybe philosophical changes with teams, 
But Dylan Cruz is going to go in to a crazy good outfield for the prospect system for the Nationals with James Wood, Robert Hassel. This is the guy that becomes the face of the organization when Juan Soto's left because they're kind of faceless right now. He will be that player. And there's a reason why the LSU uh, Tigers won the national championship right there because of those two young men uh, holding it yeah. down uh, down there in Baton Rouge. Let's go with the uh, number three pick there. It was uh, the first high school player off the board, Max Clark, uh, outfielder from uh, Franklin, Indiana, first high school player to get drafted. Uh, the national Gatorade player of the year for baseball. So we know what he can do. Speed, good arm, uh, potentially a, a five-tool player here. The Tigers, they were... Some talk that they might try to take a college bat, but they went the high school route here, Chris. What do we know about Max Clark? If there was a guy that they were going to do that with, it was Max Clark. the Maybe the hardest working player in this entire draft. He's analytically driven. He's got he's kind of like Quadzilla, you know, kind of like the Saquon Barkley. He's just building the quads, future body projection. He's a 70 run, 60 hit, 50 power. He can field. This is a true five tool player. I personally also love his approach. A lot of high school kids, especially with kind of the stardom. This is a kid that has an Instagram following that's massive YouTube videos. Uh, I was out at the MLB draft combine. He had uh, two different groups of YouTubers following him around and filming him. I mean, this is a media star that can get to these guys heads. Sometimes you can feel the pressure to hit homers. He doesn't have that. I've watched tons and tons of film on him, and his approach can change. Sometimes it's mid-pitch, which shows kind of advanced pitch recognition, where he can get his hands across his body to push it center opposite field, or he can shorten that swing up and sometimes make it long if he's just trying to launch the ball out of here. Power, we'll see where that goes, but this is five tools. I think Max Clark is star potential, and this is a really, really great pick. So the Tigers take uh, Clark over uh, Langford and Wilson, a couple of uh, college guys there from uh, uh, from college there, uh, Florida and Grand Canyon. So we'll see uh, how he uh, develops there uh, with the Detroit Tigers. Let's get your biggest winner here uh, on Sunday, Major League Baseball draft. Who, who do you like here? Who did an especially good job here uh, on Sunday, Chris? So I feel a little bit cheating here because I'm going to pick the very next team, but it's because of that reason. The Texas Rangers have to be elated with what happened. It's kind of similar to if anybody here plays fantasy baseball or fantasy football, you got a draft pick, you're sitting and you're like, okay, I know I'm going to get one of these players. Here's my worst case scenario. Well, guess what? They got almost one of the best case scenarios. It wasn't like they got the bottom pick because Wyatt Langford is an absolute monster. There's a reason he was in conversation for that number one overall pick. 60 hit, 65 power, one almost 115 max EV in college as far as where he hit. And this is one that's bonkers. 88 hits in college last year. 52 of those were extra base hits. 28 doubles, 21 homers, three triples. He can run. There's five tools. Wyatt Langford is such a steal for this team. They've got to be excited. They've gone a lot pitch heavy. They took him a rocker, Brock Porter the year prior, Jack Leiter the year before that. They're trying to build up that rotation. This is a huge power hitter, middle of the owner, maybe a four, three, four type of hitter that, you know, in the next two years, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be shocked if he were able to push up, but you put him hitting right after Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon, it's lights out. So there are plenty of other great picks. There's some ones I love. Chase Davis going to the Cardinals. I'm absolutely infatuated with, but this pick is the biggest winner. The Texas Rangers have to be super excited because I don't think they thought in any case that White Langford was going to be there for them. Yeah, and you look at uh, Langford had a higher OPS than Cruz, so that says something there, and also played in the same conference there, uh, but also losing uh, in the National Championship Series uh, to uh, LSU. All right, let's get your biggest loser uh, from the first uh, round here on the Major League Baseball draft, Chris. So the one I don't love, and it might be a little bit more about me, but I just didn't love the Royals pick at eight in Blake Mitchell. Uh, Blake Mitchell, high school uh, catcher, ca high school catchers in general can be a little bit dicey. My take on it when they did it as well was, well, if they're going to pass on a college, really a lot of helium around Kyle Teal, uh, who went to Boston at 14, they're going to do it. It's, it's because they really felt he was going to be a catcher. He's got a huge, huge arm. But when you look at the players that went after Blake Mitchell, I, I don't want to be too overreactive because this might be in part because the Royals maybe are going to underslot it and they're going to be able to pick up. There's a couple of players that have dropped in this draft that in the second, third round, they're going to be able to make a deal uh, coming up. But passing on Noble Meyer, who I, I love with the Marlins, Tommy Troy went to the Diamondbacks, Matt Shaw to the Cubs, or Kyle Teal 
who went 14 to the Boston Red Sox. There's just a lot of development and time that goes into these catchers. The hit tool, I don't think, is quite as advanced. And you also saw going much later, Ralphie Velasquez went to the Guardians at 23. He was the reason he went in the first round is because he had a, um, a commitment to ASU, and the Guardians want to make sure they got him. And that is a six foot three, 200 plus pound catcher who could move off the position, but with huge, huge power and a big hit tool. That I just, it felt very safe where there were so many good players across the board. Again, it may be about them picking up something a little bit later, but I didn't really care for what the Royals did at eight. Yeah, and we'll see if uh, Mitchell can uh, stay at the catching position there. You know, there's a lot of talk that maybe uh, they can move him uh, to a different position there. We take a look at the top 10, 10 picks of the uh, Major League Baseball draft. We talked about it. Paul Skeens, their number one overall to LSU, uh, from LSU going to the Pirates. Dylan Cruz, LSU teammate going to the Nationals. You got Clark there, Langford, Jenkins, Wilson, Rhett Louder there from Wake Forest. He goes to the Reds at number seven. You just talked about M Blake Mitchell and uh, uh, being one of uh, uh, the loser there uh, for uh, the Royals. At nine, Colorado Rockies, Chase Dolander from University of Tennessee had a really good sophomore campaign. A little bit down uh, in the junior year, but still went to the College World Series. Upper fa fastball in the upper 90s, a really good pitcher there. And Noble Meyer, who Chris really likes uh, from Oregon, he likes him a lot. Could be potentially the best pitcher of this draft here, uh, Sands or excluding Paul Skeens. Thank you, Larry. Yes, not named Paul Skeen. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> All right, well, how about the Mets here? Uh, at the number uh, 32 pick here, uh, Mets just took uh, Colin Houck, a shortstop uh, from a high school out of Georgia. What can you tell us about this young shortstop, another high school player that goes here uh, uh, early on, on Sunday? This is actually killer. I'm glad this happened because I love Colin Houck. Colin Houck had actually been mocked in a lot of mocks across different industry spots at 12 to the Arizona Diamondbacks, and he kept falling and falling. And I got to tell you why I was being a little tenuous about the Royals is I thought, well, what if the Royals were going to get a Colin Houck? This seemed to be something that maybe a team was going to get a deal. Maybe they were trying to cut a deal with Colin Houck, but this is a killer killer pick because this is a potential five tool player cross sports it's actually a two sport guy played quarterback barrels up the ball he can run 55 hit tool 55 power uh 55 overall on the arm actually 60 arm rated over on pipeline this is a fall that shouldn't have happened I'm kind of assuming maybe the Mets are going to pay over slot because the offensive potential and defensive potential for him whether he plays shortstop or moves off to second base, it's a real easy technical swing. He's starting to learn to tap into power. I actually thought this was, if you're betting from like a fantasy baseball perspective, looking into the future, this is a guy that has a lot of high-end offensive upside, and he's falling, and people are going to think, oh, you know, who is this guy? Maybe this isn't great. Colin Houck is a guy that could have easily gone top 15. We don't really know the reason. So this is a killer pick, probably actually one of my favorite picks one of the better steals of the draft that the Mets just pulled. Yeah, and it can come into an organization that already has a couple of all-star caliber players there in the uh, middle infield with Lindor uh, and the squirrel, uh, Jeff McNeil. So we'll see uh, how he uh, develops uh, with the New York Mets. All right, thanks for really uh, joining us. And uh, Chris, uh, enjoy the rest of the Major League Baseball draft, which runs all the way through uh, Tuesday. He's our CBS Sports Major League Baseball draft analyst. Chris, really appreciate you. Thanks, Larry.